Okay, today we're going to talk about the topography of coronary arteries and answer the questions, what are the coronary arteries, what is meant by ring and loop, and what is their topography? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. A big shout out and thank you to Anatomage for supplying some really cool videos and images to show this uh, anatomy today. Uh, to start off, we're going to use this very simple schematic where there's the aorta and there's the coronary arteries. Now, we're going to use the schematic to conceptualize the coronary arteries through a ring and a loop system. There's the ring. It's formed by the right coronary artery and the left circumflex artery. And they course within the atrioventricular groove, also known as the coronary groove, making a ring. It's called the coronary groove because it forms along the top of the heart, much like a crown on the top of the head. Perpendicular to the ring is a loop. It's formed by the left anterior descending and the posterior descending arteries that course on the front and back of the interventricular septum, making a loop. So the ring and the loop help us conceptualize the coronary arteries. Let's do this again, except in this uh, illustration. There's the ring, and there's perpendicular to it is the loop. Now that was fun, let's do it again except let's do it with some real cool images from anatomage. Okay, here we have an anterior view of the heart, lungs, and diaphragm. Now, the heart is inside the pericardial sac, so let's dissolve that out of the way, as well as the lungs and the diaphragm, so that we're just going to see the heart. Now, let's get some orientation. That is the right atrium. That's the front or the right ventricle. And then here's the pulmonary trunk, and here's the ascending aorta. Now notice that the left coronary artery courses behind or posterior to the pulmonary trunk. Now here we're going to see the right coronary and the left circumflex forming the ring. And there's the LAD that is forming the front of the loop. Okay, now watch. This right coronary artery is coursing here in the coronary groove. Now look at all these branches. Those branches are supplying the right ventricle and right atrium. And so now follow that right coronary artery all around to the back of the heart. And that right coronary artery is going to now give rise to the posterior descending artery or PDA. Notice that it courses along the posterior portion of the interventricular septum. This is the posterior side of the loop. It's going to supply the basically uh, bottom one-third or posterior third of the interventricular septum and the inferior walls of both ventricles. And so now let's then follow around. We're going to see the left side of the heart. We're going to see right there, that's the left coronary artery. It's really short. It's going primarily to supply the left side of the heart. It gives rise to two branches. One is the left anterior descending artery that we see there coursing along the front of the uh, um, the anterior part of the interventricular septum, it's the front of the loop, okay? It's going to supply the left ventricle and uh, all the way to the apex. And then, uh, then we're going to also then follow along, we're going to see that left circumflex coursing in that left coronary groove. This is forming also basically the left side of that ring. Remember the loop and the ring. It's going to supply the lateral and posterior walls of the left ventricle and see here it courses down to supply the posterior wall, that left ventricle. Oh, that is the coolest thing. And that, my friends, is the topography of coronary arteries in a nutshell. Just want to give a huge shout out and thanks to Anatomage. Their uh, data comes from human donors who were frozen shortly after death, and then the bodies were sectioned from head to toe. D a digital image was captured of each tissue slice, and then the structures were identified in each section throughout the entire body, head to toe, and the images were then digitally restacked to reconstruct the full anatomy, and then that's why these digital cadavers from Anatomage resemble real human tissue, and why when you now take a look at these really, really cool ways that they can dissect anatomy away. You can view anatomy like has never been done before in the history of mankind in a different way than you can through dissection of a cadaver. Really, really cool. Thanks to Anatomage.